the launch of a space shuttle, it's a pretty exciting eight and a half minutes. And eight, seven, six. First, the space shuttle main engines start up. You get a little bit of a twang, so it moves you back. And then the solid rocket boosters, the white rockets on either side of the shuttle, light up. Zero and lift off. Expanding our knowledge, expanding our lives in space. And you leave in a hurry. You get a lot of acceleration. You're mostly shielded from the noise because of wearing helmets. We do get a lot of vibration, especially in the first two minutes, because the solid rockets have a lot of vibration associated with them. After about a minute and a half, we've accelerated to about three Gs. It feels like someone that weighs three times what you weigh is sitting on your chest. It's a little bit hard to breathe. And then at about two minutes, the solid rocket boosters separate away from the rest of the shuttle. And you go back down to just maybe a little bit over 1G. That was actually the scariest part of the launch for me because it felt like we'd stopped. The vibration went away, the sense of acceleration <laughs> went away, and I thought, that can't be good. The liquid engines take you the rest of the way into orbit, and the last minute and a half or so, you're back up at three Gs. And then uh, the engines cut off, and it's a very instantaneous transition from being in a three G environment to being in a zero G environment. You definitely know you've entered a, a new environment, but you don't really have a chance to kind of sit back and enjoy it because uh, there are things to do almost immediately. The heavens have become a part of man's world. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. When I was 11 years old, the Apollo 11 astronauts landed on the moon. And of course, I was watching. I mean, the whole country, even the whole world was watching. At that time, no women were astronauts. And in fact, I didn't know that any women worked at NASA. When I went on to college, I continued to take math. And that's what really led me into science and engineering. I decided I wanted to do research, so I went off to graduate school at Stanford University. Near the end of my first year there is when the space shuttle flew for the first time. Two years later, when I was in the middle of getting my PhD, is when Sally Ride flew. She was a, a huge inspiration, not only the first American woman in space, she'd also been a physics major like me. She'd gone to Stanford, where I was currently studying, and I think I really needed to see all of those things that I had in common for it to sort of enter my brain, well, maybe this is something that I could do. The two big motivations for joining the astronaut corps were the fact that the shuttle was gonna be doing science experiments that could not be done on Earth. It was also um, a very personal experience as well. Science is really about discovery. It's about making new discoveries and trying to understand how the world operates. And we had an important science mission. It was part of understanding the whole issue of ozone depletion and the role the sun plays and the role that human activities play. I was really glad to be participating in science. You're orbiting the Earth every hour and a half, and you see it as, as one complete system instead of how we think about it when we are on the ground. On one of my missions in 1999, I had been on a presidential commission for the celebration of women in American history. And it was commemorating the 150th anniversary of the first women's rights convention. I was able to borrow a flag that was used by the National Women's Party you know, more than 100 years ago as they were fighting for women's suffrage. And there were actually three women on my flight. It was the only uh, one of my four missions where there were other women. And so we held up this flag uh, in space and got a photo of it. And it was really about honoring all the women that had come before us and all the people who had fought for women's rights because without them, our career would not have been open to women. We would not have been able to do what we were able to do. 
that's why I'm always so passionate about celebrating women. Women who have done things in history, uh, many times not being recognized at all during their lifetimes. Even though I've left NASA, I still have the opportunity to do a lot of speaking for all different kinds of groups, but a lot of it is focused on either women and girls or the Latinx community because of the role that I played being the first Latina in space. Uh, one of the things I want to do is just encourage those groups to actually consider um, STEM fields, science, technology, engineering, and math because both of those communities are way underrepresented. One of the new ways that I'm reaching out is by writing a series of uh, bilingual children's board books, English, Spanish. And there's gonna be one for each of the letters of STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. And right now the, the science book is out. The title of the book is We Are All Scientists, and it talks about curiosity being the key to asking questions and what motivates people who then end up becoming scientists. In the next few years, we'll see um, the first woman and the first person of color actually step foot on the moon, then start to build a sustainable presence, which is really what distinguishes it from the Apollo program. And also, it's about learning what you can from a moon program that will allow you to actually go on to Mars. So I do look forward to seeing the Artemis program fulfill that mission. <laughs>